you have to be fully focused uh, at every moment in this race and it, it definitely suits guys like Pitcock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he is the prototype rider for this race. I mean, just imagine, I don't know, let's say X amount of turns. I mean, every single corner, he takes it a few tenths of a second yeah. faster than anybody yep. else. You yep. know, it's just those little things. Um, yeah, I mean, the way he moves through the bunch and and, and he, he is the ideal combination of mm -hmm. this classics guy but he can go uphill so you know it's difficult to find a rider who's better suited for this race and so all right everybody welcome back to the move podcast talking about the amstel gold race god what a race i love this race i love i loved uh, all the times i did it i was so disappointed uh to never win it it was one that i, I don't know johan and i can talk just about our experiences there, but I, I always wanted to win this race. We probably talk about this every year when we talk about Amstel, just the Dutch people. I loved them. It was a perfect course for me. I started coming into form at the time and I just, I got second twice, totally sucked. Um, but <clears throat> enough both of that. Very close, by the way, both were both close. Very close. Time. I watched them yeah. last night. Yeah. I don't watch those. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Uh, joined by a course just across the street there, JB Hager. Over over at the uh, the We Do headquarters, uh, Johan again, the just not disappointing with the background, <laughs> incredible, and George down already down in the cellar it was one of those weekends, was it? Uh, no, I was actually just got home late last night, so <laughs> I wasn't and, in the cellar. And I'm I've been relegated as if y'all are watching the show, you see I, I've been relegated to the garage. This is my gym out here in the garage. I, I, we have an entire house full of friends, their kids, my kids, sleepovers. And I'm like, where am I going to do this podcast? And I, this is the only place I could come up with. I'm, I'm literally sitting on a, a stool in the garage. Nice. I like, I like uh, all you got going on there. You got some bikes, you got some new gym equipment got the, that uh, yep. we've seen. You've been using quite a lot. Uh, what else you got in that garage? Any cars in there? Any no, like a normal person? There's has currently, no, currently no cars. There's, there's bikes, uh, but I can put two cars in here, which of course you want to do when it's a hundred degrees outside. I uh, got it as you, George, you've seen all my garages. It's uh, uh, this one's no exception. Got it carpeted, right? Yep. So I've got that kind of cool indoor outdoor carpet. But yeah, you know, I got the the bikes hanging on the walls. I got this this part is is the gym, and then cars are what you can't see off screen are over there, and it's nice and quiet. Uh, <laughs> if y'all for you members who were watching the pre show, my missus just came ripping in after missing yoga, so she couldn't get out of the neighborhood because there was there's a, a kite festival. Now look, if you guys get bored ever, just look up <laughs> where is the next or nearest kite festival. What? Uh, so she couldn't get out. Anyways. Let's I have a about question him. about your gym, though, before okay. we move because right. I, I, I did a, a big ride yesterday and met a few of our listeners mm, and, and cool. a couple of them asked about you and you in the in the because they always ask, are you riding? Is Lance riding? Is, I haven't seen him. I hear he's back in Austin and I've like he's into the gym and they're like, yeah, we noticed that. Like, what's <laughs> what's going on with Lance and his gym obsession? Would you I call it that? Yeah, I, I, I think um i don't know if it's an obsession but i i'm bought into this or focus recent it's focus definitely a about. focus uh i'm bought into this theory that as oh, look i'm 52 years old and the theory being that as you get older uh, any sort of strength work resistance work is just better for you I, i've ridden enough miles in my life i do i do still mm -hmm. ride um, but I, I think that at, 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 as I get into my fifties and, and for the rest of my life, I think the strength and resistance stuff is going to be what ultimately, uh, you know, helps me pick over and grant, pick over grant, pick up, bend over, excuse me, <laughs> bend over and pick up grandkids when I'm 80 mm. or, or, or whenever. So I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's my theory or that's a theory. Then it's one I'm, I'm trusting and I'm sticking with it, but I still love my, my theory was the the five pounds over in Tuscany last yeah, year, then, about one well, year ago course. today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's, you know, the transformation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's still, that's still a very sore uh, <laughs> memory, but it was good. You know, hey, you yeah. look like you could lose five. Just imagine, <laughs> just imagine if you lost five, <laughs> let's do a little bit of business. And I know George speak, you giving me shit right now. You're going to love this. Look who's back, baby. 
Manscaped, the one man on the show. I mean, look at the man. Look at his face. Right, if anybody on this show, nobody on this show should be talking about Manscaped other than you. Somebody has yes. hair everywhere. <laughs> and I mean, they, they've told us, listen, we'll, we, 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 we have to see George shave down, do something like that. <laughs> Pay-per-view. But, <laughs> Special <laughs> only fans. That, only that's, fans. That's, Join my only fans <laughs> account. And- okay. okay. All right. Now that is something. Manscaped plus George plus only fans equals. Well, you know what it should equal is it, let's hope it equals a ton of a ton of good because uh, yeah. I, I know we kind of have fun with Manscaped. But here's the thing: um, the, it isn't just uh, the best product out there for all your manscaping needs. But check this out. Did you know that one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? I'm being I'm certainly one of those, as everybody knows. In fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer amongst men aged 15 to 35. With April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends over there at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS, that's for Testicular Cancer Society, manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. And as always, you can use the pro- promo code we do for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash TCS. And yes, soon to come, George's OnlyFans account where he will shave down. <laughs> Also today brought to you by Tushy. This is another one. I mean, all, the, all, the, all of these things just make so much sense. Now, it, we give George grief about the Manscaper. I, I, I have a personal story. Obviously, I had a personal story with Manscaped about testicular cancer. That's true. I got a personal story with Tushy, right? I got a wife. Well, a lot of us have wives. Uh, almost everybody on this show. Johan's had a few wives. <laughs> well, anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Anyways, you know, I, my wife's always been like, I want one of those Japanese $5,000 toilets in every room. And I said, I just, I, 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 I'm not doing that. I grew up a poor kid in Plano. Don't need a $5,000 toilet, but I found a hack. I love finding hacks and everything in life. Um, and I found this product years ago on the internet uh, and I bought it and I installed it myself and it was the tushy. It does everything the same. It heats your ass. It squirts water. It's got a remote control. And I installed it. Think about that, guys. I cannot change a flat tire. I installed this $5,000 toilet competitor, the Tushy, all by myself. Pretty amazing. So stop wiping until you bleed. Join the 3 million butts who have already made the switch to Tushy. For a limited time, our listeners get 10% off your entire order when you use the code we do. At checkout, that's 10% off your entire order at hellotushy.com. Use the promo code we do. All right, let's talk about the, let's finally talk about the bike race. Yohan, you brought up an interesting stat in the pre-show. I think this would surprise people because we've heard so much of Tom Pitcock, right? He's He's been this certainly for Enios, for Great Britain Cycling. He's been the 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 great hope for them for so many years. He's been an Olympic champion. He's won, you know, cyclocross races. He's only won five bike races on the road. I think, I mean, that surprised me. I knew, I knew it wasn't a lot, but five is less than what I thought. Yeah, me too. I was surprised to hear that number. Uh, he is obviously a multi discipline, uh, talent, you know, uh, as you said, Olympic champion, mountain bike, world champion, mountain bike, world champion cyclocross he's been even world champion time trial i guess in the in the juniors one party to bed twice juniors and amateurs uh, under 23 so um but for some reason he hasn't won that much i mean uh, one could say maybe he should focus solely on the road he would probably win more races i kind of agree with that i think mm. there's I think there's a big potential that Tom Pitcock is not taking advantage of, but that's a different discussion. I mean, I think we should applaud him today for winning the Amstel Gold race. He was third and second already in this race. He would state, and some, and a lot of people, that this is actually the second time he he, he wins this. He, he he said that himself. 
I, I, I think we all agree with that. We all saw the photo finish. We saw we saw the the actual photo. Hard to He's argue with the photo. I don't know how they. Yeah. I to don't refresh know, they, everyone's memory, it was 2021 yeah, sure. Pitcock and Walt Van Art photo finish that was mind boggling and uh, yeah. probably the closest finish ever in bike racing. Yeah. And they gave it to Van Art. And he said, he said in his post race interview, he said, well, I was going to say nice to win a second time this race, but I'm going to stay away from controversy. But, and he, he said it, uh, and, uh, but no, I mean, great for him to finally win. You know, you could see clearly this as soon as this breakaway of, uh, of 10 riders got established. He was the favorite. He, he took his responsibility in different moments when that group kind of broke up. And, um, I think, you know, a part of being a great rider, he's also a winner. You know, this is a guy like mm. he, if you take him to the finish, he's often winning it. He figures that, it out. Uh, he figures it out. Yeah, definitely. Not, um, not only that, but today was the first time, uh, in several weeks where we were able to have a super exciting finale. We didn't know what was going to happen until the very end. And we are all on this show, very massive fans of Vanderpool, but let's be frank, the last two uh, monuments were not that much fun to watch at the end. We knew it was going to happen with 50 K to go over an hour to go. And uh, today just all the way to the finish. It was a very um, uh, traditional uh, selection where 12 guys went uh, with 35, some K to go. Um, they they're very strong guys. Vanderpool's at the back. We don't know if he's, you know, playing possum or if he's just not having great legs. And so it was just really exciting. I know our chat leading up uh, to the finish was nobody knew what was going to happen. We all still, even Spencer thought to the end that Vanderpool was going to be able to bridge that gap, but uh, that's the type of racing that we love to see. And I think it's setting up for a really exciting Fletch Wallone and Liege best on Liege, which we're obviously going to cover as well. I mean, let's face it. <clears throat> he, 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 Obviously he's Dutch. This is their, this is their classic, but it's hard. It's hard to do what he did in Flanders and, and Roubaix from an emotional standpoint. It's obviously physically, we can, we all agree. It's physically, everybody knows it's physically hard, but from an emotional standpoint, and you put a lot on the line and there, there, there's the high of winning. I mean, the way he came back and did it again at Roubaix, I mean, that just takes it out of you. The fact that this race lands the week after, I mean, look, I love the race. I said that at the top of the show. This is, it's an amazing race, but it you know, is not the Tour of Flanders and Perry Roubaix. I mean, these are. And, and one thing for me, it shows, it shows finally the human side of Vanderpool because we know Tour of Flanders is one of the hardest races in the world, but Paris Roubaix is the, the, the race where you cause the most muscle damage because yeah. those cobblestones, they just destroy every part of your body. So I think we're seeing an actual, the human side of Interpol where perhaps he wasn't able, not perhaps he did not recover as well from Roubaix as he did from Flanders and he paid for it today. And it's just, I mean, that's just, I, I know I've done many times in Roubaix where I was flying and where Johan said, you know what, stay another week. Let's do Amstel help Lance out. It's just not the same. It's hard to recover from a, yeah. from a tough and Roubaix. A and it's a different focus too. You know I mean? It's, yeah. it's a completely, I think, I think the, the fact that we saw such a, such a, race like until the finish where we didn't know it's because Amstel gold race falls in between, you know, the, you have the Flemish cobblestones and then you have the, 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 the Ardennes. This is a race that is acceptable to a lot of riders, accessible to a lot of riders, you know, like you don't need to be a specialist in one of those to be able to be in the front. So we saw some guys in there. I mean, Mauri van Sevenant, uh, Madouas, uh, this, this young French rider, Paul Lapera, who is, you know, comes out of nowhere, wins, won three races already, won a stage in the Bath country a few weeks ago. Uh, and so, and it, tactics come into place also a lot more than in other races because it, it is so unpredictable. Can I, yeah, I, that, I just want to go back to Pidcock for just, sorry, George, just real quick. I'll Going back to Pidcock and and his win, um, look, we've all done the race. Uh, it is a very very nervous bike race, like positioning uh, almost more than uh, obviously the two races we just referenced. Positioning is key. If you're not there, your race is over. But this race has so many tight turns, uh, followed by quick sharp climbs. Posi if you have to be in position. And if you can handle your bike and you're comfortable in the Peloton and that's just easier for you, it, it, it makes the race five times easier. You are just conserving energy. Like I'm here. I don't have to fight. Like I'm going to, you know, where to be. It's not stressful to be there. He's, I don't know. 
uh, I, I think it'd be impossible to name somebody else in this peloton that can handle a bike better than Tom Agreed. Pidcock. Agreed. So he Agreed. already, you know, goes into this race going, all right, I, this race is going to be 10% easier for me than anybody else. And he has, a, he does have a great team, but just being him and being with the, the guy with those skills, it's just a lot easier. You bring up something interesting and they talked about it in the commentary I was watching is, is how the irony that this is the most popular place in the world to ride a bike and they have the most infrastructure. But when you're bringing a world tour race through town, all of that infrastructure actually gets in the way and can be hmm. really challenging. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, that, that we always call this race has uh, thousands of turns roundabouts road furniture in the middle of the road. That's another thing that makes it super technical is like you can come around a corner and all of a sudden you have half the road that you thought you did and you're going straight into a, a sidewalk, which we saw a couple of times in the race today. So you have to be fully focused uh, at every moment in this race. And it, it definitely suits guys like Pitcock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he is the prototype rider for this race. I mean, just imagine, I don't know, let's say X amount of turns. I mean, every single corner, he takes it a few tenths of a second yeah. faster than anybody yep. else. You yep. know, it's just yep. those little things. Um, yeah, I mean, the way he moves through the bunch and and, and he he is the ideal combination of mm -hmm. this classics guy, but he can go uphill. So, you know, it's difficult to find a rider who is better suited for this race. And so, I mean, listen, third, second, and first speaks for itself. You know, well, uh, it, you took the words out of my mouth because he doesn't think he got second. Right. So just imagine, right. He, he, and yeah. even he said it, he said, I've won this race before. Yeah. But okay. But if you go look at the official results, he didn't win. So now you got a guy who hasn't won the race on paper. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously he's riding great. How motivated do you think he would be? So you've got all these things we talked about his technical prowess, his form. And Oh, by the way, forget what the photos said. You got second just move along. Like that would inspire somebody. I would add this to, to the, something that fuels Pidcock, all the conversation all year about yeah. Vanderpool, Van Art, Vingago, Tade, like he's well, he's like, you know, he's gotta be, he's so close. Like he's just gotta be that chip on his shoulder. Like, Hey, I'm as good as these guys on uh, a good day. No. He, he is not in that conversation uh, as much. I, I think he's a great bike rider, but that's a different conversation. Not only that, but we haven't he even really think, mentioned. He doesn't think so. He does not yeah. think so. He well, thinks he's in there. Okay. Well, for sure. Today he showed it, but we have. Well, God bless not him. Only, not only Pickcock, but we haven't showed. We haven't even really spoken about Enios in the in the in the in the World Cup races this year. So the whole team had a chip on their shoulder. Obviously, they were riding for 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 Pickcock today. Um, Kiatowski was looking great, and um, I think they're we're going to see their momentum swing change now for this final week of the classics. Yeah, it's there. It's it's only like the whole season. It's only their second win in a world tour, a world tour race for a team like Ineos. I mean, that's. Uh, but you know, more credit to Pitcock. Let's not forget. You know, like I think about ten days ago, at, just at the start of the tour of the Basque Country, he crashed in the warm up of a time trial, had to abandon, so couldn't start. Then showed up unannounced, like the day before in Paris Roubaix. Did a great race. I think he got up. He, I, wasn't he, like he got called. He got called up at the last minute. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that. But uh, anyway, he 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 uh, he did Paris Roubaix also. So you know, I mean, it's there's not that many guys that did Paris Roubaix. We're up in Paris Roubaix. Who were who were up there now in the final of this race? I mean, right. even you know, even Van der Poel said that his legs were not super. So. Um, yeah, but I, Ineos needed this win. It's, this 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 means a lot, and you know you could feel in the interview of Pitcock after the race what a victory like this means. You know, and the stress the team like this is under. He says, you know, well now for Flesh Wallon and Lies Baston Liege, you know, at least we can race now. The pressure's off. We've won this race. You know, we can race at ease, like not not anymore under the stress of having to win, having to win. It means a lot. Yeah. Let me go on. Let me ask you a question. You, only you, only you would know this, All right? So Visma Lisa bike is, is just a, is just like the 20th iteration of this team going back. Super Confex, Buckler, uh, Quantum, Quantum Holland. <laughs> yeah, that was going way back. That's going way, way back. Word, um, word, perfect. word perfect, Novell, um, <clears throat> Robobank, et cetera. But if I think back to my time, right, go, going back to Buckler, 
uh, going back to um, word perfect Nobel uh, early days of Rabo. I mean, this was a race mm. in, 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 talking about that particular, those particular iterations of this organization. This was a race. And I, unfortunately we, we said this earlier, I got second twice and I lost both times to somebody from one of those iterations. But anyways, this is a race they absolutely had to win mm-hmm. with, without a doubt, forget stages in the tour, forget anything. You have to win the Amstel gold race. Is that still part of the conversation for a team since this team dominates, obviously everything. Yeah. I don't think so. I agree. I, 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 I mean, I don't know, but I, but I would have to imagine. I don't, I don't think so. Well, no, first, okay. of, first, first of all, first of all, you know, that's, it's a Dutch team, but Visma is not a Dutch sponsor. Right. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a Scandinavian sponsor. So, you know, like Rabobank, you could not have a more Dutch team than Rabobank. That was their world championships. We all know, we all know we've lived we've lived it. So I think that's different now. Of course, it's still a very important race, but uh it's not the most important race anymore for them. I mean, and on top of that, they have won so many already that um I think it's a different situation now. You know, my well, favorite, my favorite thing. It's just reminded me this. You or you guys will remember this is fucking amazing, right? So these guys, like everybody in the sport, you're dying to get sponsors, and it's hard to get a title sponsor, right? So the uh, Novell or Word Perfect or whoever goes away, and they get Rabobank. They're like, wow, big Dutch bank, Rabobank. It's a global bank, and then they get down to Spain for their first race. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, <laughs> and the, and the Spanish people were like, oh no 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 no. No, no, no. You, 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 you can't wear that jersey. No, no, you can't wear that jersey down here. Like you can. It's just not a good idea. And I'm like, well, well why? What's the what, the what? Well, anyways, in Spanish, Rabo means what does it mean? Like the tail? It, it's slang for dick. Exactly. <laughs> so, the, so these Spanish people are like, oh, there's Dick Bank. Like they, they legitimately freaked out. Like, are you sure you shouldn't That's, have a special <laughs> jersey for Spain? Like you can't yeah, ride around with Dick Bank as your title sponsor. I mean, I was I was on Rabobank the first year <laughs> when they started, and I came from a Spanish team from Once. So I know the story. I mean, I know this story by my sus. I remember talking to Indurain. You know, I uh, I don't. Remember, I think it was at the end of '95, and we were training, and we were we met each other in in Calpe somewhere, and I was still on Once. Uh, so it was in, but I already had the Colnago for, from Rabobank. And he said, well, why are you writing it? I said, yeah, I'm going to this new team, Rabobank. And he said, eh? <laughs> <laughs> El Banco de Rabo? <laughs> the the, the bank, bank of dick. I mean, <laughs> you just can't make it. I hate to say things like that, but this is, these are all true stories. Yeah. Like, Actually, I don't really hate Tana, but um, that was even Enderine. He has no sense of humor. And he's like, yeah, well, he, did, he, was, he, he thought it was fun. Uncle Rubble, the bank of the dick. <laughs> that seems strange. Should you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, but no, I mean, to come back to the Amstel. I mean, that was the world championships, uh, you know, of that of that team. And um, listen, I mean, they, they still today, yeah. you know, hats off to them, you know, because they're losing their leader, Walt Van Aert, they, they, you know, and they still have somebody on the podium today. It yeah. shows the depth of this yeah. team also, you know, to have somebody on the podium without your best riders being there. Yeah, I agree. They're, 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 they're going to be proud of today's finish. And it was good to see Mark Hershey uh, perhaps reaching his level of the past. I mean, that was a solid four man breakaway. I, I love seeing, um, Ben Savamont, how like that dude must have died a thousand deaths in today's race. Kept coming back, kept coming back, and and some people perhaps might have criticized his his lead out there at the finish, but that was his only chance to get top four. I know he would have been tenth if not if he hadn't done that. So it worked out perfectly for a guy like Dickcock. But for me, I, I thought it was an amazing race that he did. Yeah, so this so his you know his dad was uh, Lantern Rouge in the Tour de France at at oh. least once or maybe twice. When he was racing on Lotto. So yeah. he's, doing, he's doing better than his dad. Let's uh, keep talking. I want to talk about Mark Hershey when we get uh, come back from the commercial break, but, uh, um, and, and a bunch of other stuff. JB, I know you've got some, uh, some readers' questions and stuff too. We'll get to all that. But before we do, today's show brought to you by AG1. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last, I don't know, six or seven years, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel 
totally focused, energized, nourished. And by the way, I'm not great about the veggies and the fruits and all the things you're supposed to be good at. This I said earlier in the show, I love those hacks. Well, this is the hack, right? Uh, that's because sir, and each, each serving of AG1 delivers a daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. It's all about taking control of your health. If there's one product that I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. A uh, special offer for our listeners, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash the move. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash the move. Also today brought to you by Helix Sleep, the top rated mattress from both GQ Magazine and Wired Magazine. I think they have over 10,000 five-star reviews. I've been on the Helix mattress for years now. Uh, it's very simple. You go on and you take a two-minute sleep quiz. You talk about the things. You talk about your your the, the way you sleep, and they and they make you a fully mized, fully customized mattress delivered right to your doorstep. Comes in this little thing. I mean, it literally looks like a set of golf clubs showed up. You bust open this box, and this thing just comes out, and it's your mattress, and you sleep like a king. Uh, by the way, every mattress comes with a 15-year manufacturer's warranty and the same 100-night uh, trial as the rest of the Helix. Look, uh, that's I'm sorry, that's with Helix Elite, uh, but a 100 100-night trial. Think about that, right? Get to night 99, you're like, I don't know. Send it back. Uh, I was I was wrong. They have 12,000 five-star reviews, uh, and they also have mattresses for the little ones. Helix Sleep is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash the move. That's helixsleep.com slash the move. Last one of the day brought to you by Mando. It doesn't just cover up over odor after the fact uh, with, with like heavy fragrances. And I know you have a personal story when it comes to this, George. You said you were traveling all day yesterday and I think it's a little weird. You're wearing the same shirt today that you were wearing yesterday, but you were rocking the Mando. Yes. And I don't know. You can even show us. Uh, d d d like, give a little sniff test. How's it go? Well, well you know, I love to no, go like, go like, go like that. How's, is everything still okay there? I'm always supporting our brand. So yes, I traveled all the way home from Arizona. Yes. They wore this shirt for my, you know, four hour flight uh, back home to the East coast. And you know what? I wanted to have the same shirt on for the show today and doesn't smell that my Mando on the whole uh, day. So I'm good. See, so here's the, and here's why, because it stops odor at the source by blocking the bacteria on your skin from eating your sweat, which is the actual cause of BO. Hmm. We are learning a lot, right? We learned uh, just a minute ago, how you say, uh, uh, or what, now let me, the, uh, in this context, what Rabo means in Spanish, you, you guys learned that, right? And now did you know that what, what causes BO? Well, now you do, right? That means. Mando is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. I and mean, my friends, we have a living, breathing example in George Hincapie because he's worn that shirt for at least 72 hours. And he swears to God that it still smells fine. Is that right, G? I, I don't know about 72 hours, but, uh, you know, a, a day, let's say a day. <laughs> I know, but it says I mean, well, then wear it another day. We'll do it. Okay. <laughs> keep wearing it. I'll keep wear, it on. Wear I'll it. Keep it on for two more days. All right. <laughs> keep it on for two more days and then and then um and then take it off for your OnlyFans account. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so here's here's special offer for our listeners. You get the Mando starter pack. It's perfect for you guys. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. Luckily, we also have a discount code. All you got to do is go over to shopmando.com. That's shopmando, M-A-N-D-O, shopmando.com. Use the code we do, and the discount code gets to what equates to 40% off your starter pack, shopmando.com. All right, just real quick on Hershey, because with Yohan, you and I have talked offline about him a little bit. It's contract year. Contract's up. The he was good today. You want, I mean, uh, I don't know if the team takes him to the tour, but he's, he's going to, from now on out the, the rest of the season, this kid's going to be good. It's okay. He's one of those guys. I don't love it. I don't love guys like that, 
but he's going to be strong the rest of the year. My theory. I think so. I think yep. so too. Yep. When you say guys like that, you mean you're just pulling it together because you're the, the contract situation we, and look, I mean, we, we all, we all know this, these guys, right. It, it, it guys get, it's like clockwork. If you got a three-year deal, you know, or some, somebody, has a good, somebody has a good season, right. They knew on the scene, somebody comes along, offers them a new three-year deal. They leave, you know, they go to a different team and they disappear for two years. You're like, well, that, what happened to that guy? And then all of a sudden in the third year, well, here they come because <laughs> they know the contract's up. I mean, guys, how many times have we, you can't even, I mean, dozens and dozens of times. I don't, I, look, I think if, if you get a three-year contract, it doesn't matter how many years the con- you're, you're paid to do a job the whole time, not when the contract is coming to an end. It does make a difference in the motivation, I think, in certain writers and, and- you know, um, I don't know. Apparently he also had some health problems in his first year at, uh, at UAE, but, um, I think we're seeing the real potential of Mark Hirschi. I mean, we, we saw yes. what he was able to do a few years ago in the tour when he was, uh, he won two stages, almost three, I think. Um, and, um, and then for some reason he, you know, he, he kind of went on a lower level, but, but he is a strong rider and he also has this, to me, he's one of those guys who has this race instinct, you know, like he's a real racer. Like he sees when it happens and uh, knows when to be there. So um, another, another rider that I think that a, a race like Amstel Gold is an ideal course for him. Mm, he's good on the bike. A little, little trivia for you guys. I'm going to throw one at you. Good. Who has the most wins in Amstel Gold of all time? It's five. I'll give you that. Oof. Because I have a feeling you guys will guess who was second, who had four wins. I know, I know it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Give these guys a chance. Uh, uh, the the Eddie Merckx or no? No, Merckx no. had two wins. Lance, yeah. John Ross. Of course. Boom. Boom! I'm impressed because nice. this was in the late '70s, early '80s. Here. Again, look. Uh, uh, I mean, John Ross was was the the, the 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 when we had a little bit of fun with it, but the team that is now. Uh, Visma Lisa bike goes, it goes all the way back to, 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 I mean, these are 40 years ago with, with, in for you lifelong fans of cycling, you'll remember Buckler and super Confex. I mean, all these guys yelling night them, Van Hoydunk, uh, Eric van der Arden, um, all of these guys, Franz Massen. Yeah. I mean, these guys are Dutch legends. That was Jan. And right. And, and so, as I said, like they had to win one race. It was this race that, um, I went a little bit out on a lemon guest, John Ross, but I mean, there was, it was saw, his team and he's Dutch and, and they had to win the race that I saw, I saw a nice story about that. I mean, I'm still, you, you're not going to like it. I'm still going to bring it up. Uh, uh, 99, I'm still gold race. You were away with Michael Booger and oh, yeah. Michael, Michael, uh, gave an interview, uh, about this, I think last week. And he said, young Ross was in the, in the team car next to Theo Leroy. And he said, Ross was yelling on the radio. He said, he said, if you pull one more time with Armstrong, I'm pulling your head off after the race. <laughs> oh. no. hey, by the way, Jan Ross, 10 Tour de France stage wins, world champion in 79. World, mm-hmm. champ- world champion at the, at the, in Valkenburg, where mm-hmm. the Amstel race. Uh, Two was. times Ronda van Vlaanderen, uh, Milan San Marie Remo, Bay. Gent Wevelgem, Perry Roubaix. Yeah. And more. Yeah, so he's Hall of Famer. Without and, who, and I, I look, I, I like John Ross. I mean, he back was in the days, back in the days, they called it the Amstel Gold Ross, not the Amstel Gold race. <laughs> there you go. He was no bullshit. John Ross no. called it the way it was. Exactly. And, 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 and you knew exactly where you stood yeah. with him. Um, I, I always, I never raced, obviously never raced for him, but I like, you just, you see this guy around, you're like, man, this motherfucker is, yeah. is, is straight shooter. Yeah, I had so, him as my boss the two years I was on Rappelbank, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Was the guy just said it. Yeah. So then who's our pick for uh, Wednesday? Since uh, we, we got to see today, we're going to see similar guys on Wednesday. Obviously, a completely different race, shorter. All comes down to the last climb. Um, maybe is uh, Pogacar coming on Wednesday? I don't know if he's racing. Yeah. He's, I, he's racing Liege, but uh, I don't know if he's racing. But um, I'm going to say Benoit Cosnefroy. Ah, he's, he's right Whoa. Whoa. Mm. Hmm. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with Hershey. Okay. 
Yeah. He's been up there in that race before. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to say, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not. How about you pick Dylan Tunes? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm not picking Dylan Tunes. Uh, it's Masters weekend, right? It's Sunday. It's the final round of the Masters. My head is focused on, look. The, kite I, Fest. I thought it was all the Kite Fest you wanted to go to. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not I'm going Master. to Kite uh, I can Kite Fest. <laughs> Okay. Well, mama, mama bear, when she came in, I was like, Oh, did I do something? I was like, shit, she, Oh, I'm in trouble. I mean, that was, she left right to go get her down dog on and all this, you know, this gratitude and the Maste shit they do. And boy, when she came up, couldn't get to that stuff. Wow. Not so nice. It, it was like, she came from a Metallica concert. Oh gosh. She's, and I, I'm not shitting you not. She's pulling up again. Uh, uh, this is terrible. I might, I might have to get off the show. <laughs> no, but she's right here. Oh, Check God. her temperature on that, on the traffic. I want to hear that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let's see if we can get her on. Hmm? That was, well, how's, uh, the how's the gratitude feeling over there? Honey, they want you to come on the show. Cause, uh, <laughs> I was just talking about you. <laughs> Uh, well, we're on the air. I was just telling them about how you left going out to get namaste and down dog and stuff and gratitude and all this shit that they talk about at those things. And the way you came back, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, it, come, they don't, they think I'm making it up. <laughs> no, they legit. Here she comes. See, look. Yoga. Got she, bagels and stuff. She doesn't look very namaste to me. No yoga. <laughs> right. I thought she was the teacher. Him when he's done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go play golf. All right. I want to bring up something that's a loose end <laughs> from last week's show, and we have Johan on this week, and he probably is more well versed on this. But there was a lot of a lot of dialogue on our comments about uh, Matthew Vanderpool and Alpeson and a bit of that history, <laughs> which we weren't real well versed on last week. Uh, Ruli, uh, Shocker. Ruli, Ruli Fowler wrote in and said, there was no team before, uh, Vanderpool, the Rudhoft brothers. Am I saying that correctly? Rudhoft, Rudhoft, yeah. Rudhoft, uh, created the team around him. They first started with cycle cross, then expanded into the type of racing that Vanderpool wanted to do. Only later they developed into a full blown road racing team. So basically they recognized very early that they had an incredible diamond and they did everything to make him happy and keep him. Of course, the big teams wanted him, but the ultimate freedom was basically what was too important to him. Does that sound accurate, Johan? That's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely true. They started with a small size. I mean, it's incredible what these two guys have started and what it has become. And they're still there. The only two guys who are in charge. So hats off to them to, you know, to, to, to build something like that. I mean, it's an amazing team. Of course, you know, with a guy like Vanderpool. Uh, makes things a bit easier, but this team is not just Van der Poel. You know, they have a lot of other good riders. You know, they have Jasper Phillips and they have a bunch of riders who, who win races. So, um, yeah, it started as a really small team. And the fact that Van der Poel is, you know, his brother was there also before, until he retired. Um, and, um, and yeah, it's, I think it's true that he stays there first of all because of the great relationship he has with the, one of the team managers. That's that's the first first and foremost. And I was going to say hats off to him. I mean, exactly. imagine the offers he gets in the off season. Exactly. Yes, yes, but also you know, let's not forget. You know, he 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 is very well paid there too. Uh, just signed a new five year deal with the team and a ten year deal with Canyon. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, I think that's what I heard. How, on much, cycling, how, right? how much on the team deal? Um, I, I would say, I mean, I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to take a guess that his base salary would be 4 million. That's, that's, that's the greatest deal in cycling right now. But think about it. There, there are other people that make, or you got to think about the people that make two, five or three. Yeah. Right. So that's a smoking, it, again, you're guessing, but that would be a, the best deal in the Peloton right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and over five years. Okay. You know, so. Plus Everybody, the these other guys. Canyon, have, so I don't know what that is, but that's also, that's, that's, that's how, that's different. how they, yeah, that's how they supplement the deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's doing, I mean, Canyon's loving this. 
And I mean, uh, what's better rider than Van der Poel for a bike brand, right? I mean, he does cyclocross, he does mountain bike, he, he wins everything on the road. I mean, luckily, they, luckily they don't make any any track bikes. Otherwise, he would do the he would do the velodrome too. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting. Good. We got to clear that up a little bit, and then we'll uh, be getting back together. You'll have the move again midweek, Flesh Wallone, Wallone, and then uh, we have Tour of Alps coverage coming in next weekend, Liège the following weekend. It's going to be busy. Yep. We'll okay, be there, guys. All right, everybody. Are we good? We good. Yeah. We're good. All right, everybody. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in.